Hey everybody. I have here a conversation with uh, Desmond is amazing. Uh, and this is a kid who is promoted by the LGBT as a drag kid. Um, and so this is, he very rarely does a conversation uh, with people. Uh, his, I, his mom used to run his account, claims it's him here, but I, I don't know, I think it still might be Wendy, but the claim is, is that it's Desmond and that he's okay and there's nothing wrong, but I wanted to go through this conversation uh, and show how they use the tactics of like repeating lies and taking things um, out of context, if any context at all, just a complete lie. So I wanted to go through this conversation with Desmond or maybe his mom, because he they did used to have it on there that the account was entirely ran by Desmond's mom, uh, Wendy. So we're going to start this conversation here. Uh, with Desmond. Uh, Desmond says, why are you harassing my followers? If you have something to say, say it to me. You are creepy obsessed and give me pedo vibes. Also, this conversation will be broadcast on IG stories. So uh, to start right here, this conversation actually was not put on IG stories. Um, so that's a lie. I was blocked, but I did check and this wasn't on there during or when it happened. So um, checking the story so this wasn't actually on there so that's a lie um and with the saying it to me like desmond's mom doesn't let you put anything on the account or desmond whoever it is i'm just going to refer to this as um, this account uh, this account doesn't let you put uh negative comments or anything like this is weird or this is creepy or anything like that like on Desmond's pictures uh, because they instantly get blocked or removed and then your account gets blocked from this account so you can't actually say anything which is kind of why this is such a rare thing um, so um, I responded I'm concerned about your laughing at Desmond when he said that he was afraid of murder What scares you the most these days? Being murdered. <laughs> By who? A serial killer. I think that's probably pretty rare. What else scares you? Dying. You're scared to die? <laughs> Why? <laughs> I think when you die, like, you don't realize it and you're just everything just goes black and you're dead, but you don't realize it. So I don't think it would be scary because you wouldn't know what happened. I'm also scared of global warming. That's probably pretty scary. What are you talking about, Desmond says. I said, you put him around a leg, Michael a leg who has video of Aleg talking about seducing young straight men in your interview with Desmond. Uh, so there is a video of Michael Aleg talking about how he would seduce young boys if they were straight, like they would, uh, he would bring a, a beautiful girl around the boy, get him to say Michael was cute, and then Michael and his boyfriend would bring him back to their house and uh, do ecstasy uh, or drink or watch the game and everything, like, yeah. So, and so how do you seduce these uh, boys, Michael? What's your trick? My charisma and charm. But what, how, let's, let's, do a role, let's do a role play here, okay? Like, I'm the number, all right? I, you know, come up to your party and say, are you Michael Ellick? Yes. I've never what done do you this. Look like? I've never done this gay stuff look at before. Cute. What do you look like? No, I mean, who are you supposed to, what are you supposed to look like? I'm 16 and I'm from New Jersey. Oh. I work at 7-Eleven. Oh, now oh. that changes the whole thing. Yeah, let's do this role Now I get out. my pretty girlfriend over here, Julie. Oh, hi, Julie. Hey, you're a sharp-looking chick. And then she says, oh, do you know Michael Alley? And he'll say yes. And That's the guy with the club, right? Yes, and then she'll say, oh, aren't you special and aren't you wonderful? And come over here and have a drink just for knowing Michael and... And how, you know, how wonderful, we'll have to put your name on the mailing list and mail you, mail you all these nice invitations and, and, and how popular you'll be. 
Take him to other clubs. Run Take him to other clubs. And Take then she'll say, clubs. then she'll say, is it Michael cute? And he'll say yes. And she'll well, say, well, he's cute if you're gay, I suppose. But and he's straight. And, 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 and then Julie will tell it. Julie's beautiful. Then she'll tell him. Then she'll say, oh, but I'd like you so much better if you could just, ad, you know, if you could just admit that you like boys or whatever. She said. She said, you don't even have to be gay to admit to admit that he's cute, you know. I see. And before you and know Julie it, can do then it. then they'll have then will have four or five drinks, and before you know it, he's in our house, and that's where I come in. And what do you do? And I, I make him feel like at home. Yo, we watch the game. You know, we put on a video show. Oh, you do the jock thing. I do, I do you know, I, I to make, make him feel comfortable. comfortable. Yeah. yeah. Of you, you can't add me, you know. Hey, yeah, I'd love to watch the game. Yeah. You, you got any beer? Yeah, I got some more beer here. Uh huh. Before you know it. Fuck what's this in the drawer? Anywhere? What's this in the drawer, Kefki? Is this some leftover ecstasy? Oh, you ever tried ecstasy? No, I never did. Was this stuff for real? It's just like you ever smoke pot? Yeah, sure. It's just like that. Really? Yeah. You're not gonna try anything funny though if I use it. Hey, what, 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 what do we look like? Weirdos? Are we the weirdos? Come on. Well, at that point, I suppose uh, you're begging for for trouble with uh, the audience out there as your straight man. Yeah. And, and with this murder thing, Michael Aleg was actually. Um, Michael Aleg is a convicted murderer. He apparently he chopped his drug dealer up because he owed him money. He chopped him up, maybe put Drano in his veins and things, um, and like bragged about it and went to jail for a while and makes jokes about it to this day. Um, so the first time I ever met Desmond was when he came to your house to record those three episodes of The Pew, and I probably sat with him for like an hour when we were talking. And then after that, and you know, I, I, I didn't see him again for almost a year. I was really impressed, by the way, um, even when the camera was off. By when before we before we started filming, um, the 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 line of questioning and the the, the, the prep work that you did with Desmond, um, telling him what you were going, you know, how this was going to work and what the kinds of questions you were going to ask and what would be expected of him and how you know, not to be nervous and trying to kind of, kind of like ease them into it. It was very it was impressive. Well, that is based on my experience of interviewing children that uh, you kind of have to warm them up yeah. and ask, you know... Warm them up? What do they mean by that? <laughs> oh, gosh. Basically, yeah. So, uh, presumably, this video will now be sliced and diced into... Sliced and diced? Are we going to kill them now? Uh, well, we better well, direct to a commercial you're before certainly you are certainly capable of more trouble. We'll be right back. So then Desmond says, why did you say you saw me with a naked adult creep? Um, I was replying back to uh, Desmond with that interview. He said he was afraid of dying and being murdered. And then I said to clarify, I saw Lactatio with a naked adult. Please don't put words in my mouth. I'm happy to clarify anything. Because Because Lactatia is another drag kid who took a picture with a, a fully grown male uh, who was naked right next to this little kid. Uh, why did you say you saw me with a naked adult? I didn't. Uh, it's, it said it's Lactatia right above. I'm talking to you, Wendy, and I never said anything about Desmond with a naked uh, adult. Uh, I saw all the screenshots of your conversations. You are obsessed with me and my mom. This is Desmond. You're obsessed. So I, this is where I would say, we'll just say this is Desmond, but this is this account. Um, but again, Wendy does monitor the account or did, was fully in control of it a while back. Um, and uh, especially on the older post, which is weird because she talks like she's Desmond, like first person Desmond. Um, and uh, yeah, I did talk with one of Desmond's uh, people who commented saying that they thought, uh, which picture was it on? There's a picture of Desmond where he's carrying a bag. Um, so this, when he was six, this six-year-old boy was carrying a bag that said, if people don't have books, don't F them. Um, and so, uh, you, you know, profane F f them you know so uh that's um i was talking with them about that they were on, they commented on that picture with the conver 
the conversation with the person that I had and I was asking them about some of this stuff and they actually said something and actually Desmond responded so it was a good thing um, I said Desmond there are many concerned for you it's not normal for a child to be on a couch in front of a roofie painting I did an interview, that's it. That painting had always been the background of that YouTube show. Uh, you did speak, uh, you did, sp uh, so this YouTube show is with Michael Aleg and another guy um, where Desmond actually did an interview with Michael. Um, and behind the couch was a, um, a picture that said Ruhypnol on it that was painted by Michael. And um, Desmond also looked very droopy during that interview. Um, just an observation, uh, not an accusation. Uh, you did Special K off your hand with Bella Noach too. I don't know his name, but kids don't know how to snort ketamine. What has this world come to? It's come to a world where drag kids actually exist. And people do ketamine on a couch. People do ketamine on a couch. People do ketamine on a couch. So Bella Noche is a, a, like a drag dude who Desmond did an interview with and it was pretty disturbing. Um, but Desmond did snort uh, ketamine off the hand, which is where people apparently do it in clubs. Uh, and he just happened to know it and he says he learned it in school for doing you know, drug awareness or something. But when I was learning about drugs in school, they never showed you how to actually use the drug in a club way. So that's pretty odd. He goes to clubs a lot. Uh, they didn't just hang it up there because I was there. I was getting fed up with the, and then so that was the Michael A leg. The, they didn't ha just hang it up because I was there. Uh, I was uh, and then I was getting fed up with the people in the comments entrapping me to say stuff about drugs, Hitler and killing myself. I was being sarcastic and acting out. Um, so that was with the Bella Noche. People were commenting things about drugs and about Hitler, and, and you should never tell anyone to kill themselves. Um, so uh, Aleg also has many other paintings of drugs, which he does. Joked about the murder, which he did. Said, "Are we gonna? Um, what are we gonna kill somebody?" And then the guy that he does the shows with actually said, um, "Well, we all know you're certainly capable." Um, and so and this dude Michael he actually did the drugs like he he the drugs that his drug dealer that he killed gave him He went to jail after he got out. He was doing those same drugs again um, And so yeah, he joked about cutting slicing and dicing people uh, So stop making lies about me and stop obsessing over me you are creepy and does that mean I do drugs, murder people, or hang out with him? No, I did an interview. I never said Desmond murdered people. Uh, so, okay. It makes sense why you'd be scared of murder and dying if someone can do it and joke about it and you're by them. Uh, Desmond said, I'm not scared of being murdered. Um, he did in the interview with his mom say he was afraid of being murdered. He was afraid of dying. She laughed both of those things off. Then he said, global warming and she was like yeah that's a serious one it's like a script she's like desmond keep to the the ideology of the socialist you know democrat i don't like politics but they're definitely on the left side so keep to your left script is kind of what it seemed like observation uh didn't say you do uh, i want to make sure you're okay as with many others and i thank you for talking with me uh desmond says the only thing that upsets me now is the Nona Pandy. Uh, I have to be kind of careful with my words there. Uh, the the Rona. Um, I just kind of ignored that because, well, it's another thing. Uh, you said you were in an interview. Parents don't put their kids around murderers who joke about it. Why are you obsessing over an interview I did like six years ago anyways? I said all this stuff adds up. To what? Am I on, Desmond says, to what? Am I on drugs? Do I murder people? Am I scared of murder? No, I'm just trying to go to high school and get good grades. Are you aware that the things a -Lig did with seducing people and things? Talk about getting, talking about getting underage kids to drink and do club drugs. Uh, it's not you, it's who you're around. So I'm talking to 
to why this is Desmond. Uh, like it's not about him. It's about who he's around, who the, the people that his mom allows to be around him. I said, children are innocent. Uh, glad to hear that you're getting good grades too. Uh, the LGBT needs better arguments. Please know that that was something I was wondering if you would uh, ask about because their arguments are very flawed for the, the LGBT. Um, and then, um, but Desmond says, but then I have people like you obsessing over me, which I'm not telling lies about me, uh, telling lies about my parents and trying to bully me. I don't think I'm lying and I'm definitely not bullying. Uh, like I don't have enough to worry about being gender fluid at school and constantly being cyber bullied every day This is something I wish I would have said that the LGBT is so protective if anyone does anything to you at school They're gonna get in so much trouble. They're the most protected class probably is the LGBT rainbow uh, so I mean I I lost a job for the conversation that came from that so um being uh, cyber bullied every day if you are concerned about me why didn't you reach out to my mom's Instagram or Facebook why are you bullying me and talking about me sexually so I didn't know Wendy had a Facebook I'm actually gonna try to reach out to her uh, why are you bullying me and talking about me sexually I'm not talking about Desmond sexually at all as you can clearly see um, I don't hang out with Michael he's not even alive I did one interview years ago because uh, Michael did overdose on the drugs that sent him to jail for killing the dealer that gave him those drugs. Um, so I said, saying it's who you are, you can't help it, we are animals, etc. will be used by groups with wretched perversions. This is a biblical thing. A lesbian even researched how accepting this stuff leads to the downfall of society like Rome, Greece, Hellenistic cultures, etc. I, I say in the introduction to my, you know, to my new book, my new collection, my particular transgender um, rebellion came at a time when um, there wasn't this, uh, these ideas in the air, that, 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 the, that the moment you are dissatisfied with the limitations of your present gender definition, uh, that there is a, 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 this enormous mechanism waiting to alter your body, um, to, to, to halt puberty, to slow, slow your puberty down. To, um, uh, uh, people uh, all very well-meaning and very sympathetic are there to provide um, uh, surgical uh, intervention into and, and potential uh, you know permanent changes in your body with which there's no going back okay? I mean, I, I, for me um, you know a, 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 trans, a, a sex change operation um, opens one door but closes many others right? I, 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 I personally believe that um, anyone who um, who uh, who collaborates in, a, in a, an intrusion into a developing child's body and mind is guilty of child abuse, a crime against humanity, okay, because that child is not prepared to make such a decision. Okay? I, I, I think that such, such decisions about sex reassignment surgery must wait um, when one attains a majority, which would be, it seems to me, a minimum of, of age 18. Uh, I'm, I'm very concerned with this because I think that um, it's become a fashion, okay, uh, that, that, a, uh, that uh, the transgender uh, definition has become a kind of convenient label for young people who may simply feel alienated, okay, culturally for many other reasons, okay, so that in the 1950s they might have become a beatnik, in the 1960s they might have become a hippie and taken uh, you know, mind-expanding drugs, okay, and so today you're encouraged to think that your alienation is because you are not totally defined, you know, uh, identifying with your particular inherited gender definition. Um, so I, I'm I'm very concerned about this. I think that a lot of it, uh, I think that, that, that the, that the uh, collaboration of the bureaucratic machinery with it has to do with the assault on masculinity, okay? Ah, okay, do you see trans the gender doesn't really exist, it's not really polarity. I mean, it's, it, it, everything's all about expanding women's rights, but also terminating men, okay? And, and defining men out of existence. Uh, masculinity is by definition toxic, okay? Masculinity doesn't exist. You see, this is, this is the proof of it. But now I began, my, all my studies, my, my book Sexual Personae began as a dissertation at Yale, uh, graduate school, on androgyny. I've always been fascinated, attracted you know, to the subject of androgyny, uh, and, and that's what the sexual persona is. I explored it in history, but the, the more I explored it, I realized that um, that historically, this uh, this uh, the movement toward androgyny occurs in late phases of culture. Okay, as a as a civilization is starting to uh, unravel. Okay, and that and you can find it again and again and again through history in the in, in the in the Greek art. Okay, you can you can see it happening. All of a sudden, okay, there's a, there's a kind of uh, you know the, the the sculptures of of um, of handsome nude young men athletes that used to be very robust. Okay, in the archaic periods suddenly begin to seem like wet noodles okay, toward the end. Okay? And, the, uh, and, that, and that the people who, who, who live in such periods, a late phase of culture,
whether it's, it's the Hellenistic era, whether it's the Roman Empire, whether it's, it's a, the Mauve decade of Oscar Wilde in the 1890s, whether it's Weimar Germany, people who live in such times, okay, feel that um, they're very sophisticated, they're very cosmopolitan, okay, and homosexuality, heterosexuality, so what, anything goes, and so on, all right, and so, and, but, but from the perspective of, of historical distance, okay, you can see that it's a culture that no longer believes in itself, okay, and then, and, and then what, you, what you invariably get are, are, you know, are, are people who are convinced of the power of heroic masculinity, okay, on the edges, whether they're the Vandals and the Huns, okay, or whether or whether they're the barbarians of ISIS, okay, you see them, you know, starting to mass on the outsides of the culture, and that's what we have right now. That there is a tremendous uh, and, and, and rather terrifying disconnect between the infatuation with the transgender movement on, in, in our own culture and what's going on out there, okay. All right? And so, and so, I mean, that's why I'm concerned. I feel it's ominous, okay. I, I, I question whether uh, the transgender uh, choice is um, in, indeed genuine in every every single case. Uh, but what, again, what concerns me is when uh, well-meaning uh, adults, you know, believe that they're helping people uh, by by making it easier uh, some permanent change in the body from which there is no going back. Um, you know, for example, Brown University, one of the elite, uh, Ivy League schools in the United States, put uh, sex reassignment surgery on its in, uh, on its uh, student insurance program. Okay, so you, so that so that it becomes you know, they can get a, a sex change in college. I think I, I thought, oh my lord. Okay, I, I feel that's evil. Okay, because what it does to young, to young people today facing an uncertain job market. Okay, what it says people who are questioning their gender while they're at Brown University um, suddenly feel well, it's like economically you know a better judgment you know for me to move now on this rather than to wait till I don't have a job and living in my parents' basement. Okay, so so actually the, you know, the, the adult community trying to be understanding okay, is, I think, involved in, in, in possibly making a permanent change in someone's life that, that could have tragic consequences. I want to stay to love all people no matter their sin and pray they repent. Jesus is the way, not love is love, but unconditional love is key. Jesus is key. Uh, Desmond says, doesn't mean anything to me. I've done hundreds of interviews since going viral. I said, your mom is big on A-Lig. Isn't he and James Earl James your inspiration? Uh, my mom doesn't have anything to do with Michael. She's into World War II and being a history docent. Uh, no one, no one want, no one. And then I said, no one who wants your well-being would hurt you. He says, James Earl. Uh, and then I say, hmm, who did you tell Bella Noach were your inspirations for drag? Michael A. Lig and James St. James. Um, he says, back then I had many inspiration years ago. I don't have those same inspirations anymore. Back at the time of these interviews, Michael A. Lig and James St. James were the two people he referred to as his inspirations. I said, my naming might be a little off. I'm glad to hear that you do. Saying to, the, I, I'm glad you have different inspirations that aren't murderers. Um, and then I said, many people have a concern. He says, why are you obsessed with me? You're really creeping me out. Uh, so notice they're trying, like, he's trying to say, like, you're creeping me out. Why are you obsessed with me? Uh, but then, like, keeps the conversation going. Doesn't say stop. I'm not replying anymore or anything. So keeps the conversation going, um, which is good. I feel like I really had a chance to reach. If this was really Desmond, I really had a chance to reach him. Um, so I said, since you have and many other kids have been stripped, or since you have many other kids have been stripping at money for money at bars and clubs so desmond kind of started it many others do it there are videos of kids dressing up and then going to bars and clubs and stripping and taking their clothes off and getting money which is wrong um and then uh desmond says you make me uncomfortable stripping uh kids are being sexualized uh, makes many people kids being sexualized makes many people uncomfortable. I said Desmond says why are you talking about me sexually? I do not strip I <laughs> said kids in general not you um, and I said uh, so Desmond says I do not strip I said yes in drag it's called a reveal taking your clothes off for money is stripping and then Desmond says I took a robe off to reveal my costume which was fully dressed is that stripping to you there's video of you and others and then I said there's video of you and others doing it 
Why is a kid at a bar anyway? Desmond says tipping is a sign of appreciation, not a sexual thing. It was a venue and it was an all ages show. Um, I said I thought it was at the third leg bar or something. Um, third leg, you are gross. Stop talking about me sexually. This is sexual harassment. So that's the name of the, that's what I thought the name of the bar was. How does Desmond even know that reference, by the way, if he's like 14? I have I didn't know that when I was 14. Anyway, um, not talking about Desmond. I'm talking about the bar, so I'm not talking about Desmond sexually. But gay culture is hyper-sexualized. Hyper, hyper, hyper-sexualized. Um, why are you making sexual innuendo at me? I'm not. I'm talking about the name of the bar. I said, uh, I can't find the bar name. Gay culture is immersed in sexual things. A-Leg talked about it a lot. I don't want to discuss that with you because it's nasty. Um, and then I said, I'm not. That's blatantly false. That's referring to the sexual innuendo and the sexual harassment and talking about him sexually. And then I found the name of it and I said, oh, $3 bill was the name of the club. Desmond says, so what? Do you think I was drinking at the bar and around sexual things? Is that what your imagination is? Most of the people there were relatives, friends, a few of my teachers supporting me and people I have worked with. Why are you perverting everything about me into sexual? Um, and then I said, the logo of the bar is three hairy legs. That's literally the logo of this place that Desmond was dancing at. He says, stop it. Can't that right there is like, stop it. Like, he knows I'm right. Um, you are sexually harassing me. Um, and then I said, I didn't say you were drinking. Uh, you are sexually harassing me. I said, you performed at the bar. I'm stating the logo. Desmond says, did I design the logo? I said, you danced there. He says, no, it has nothing to do with me. Stop talking about sex with me. You are making me uncomfortable. This is sexual harassment but keeps talking. Would you, if you were being harassed, would you keep interacting with someone? Like, come on now. Uh, I said, I'm not talking about sex at all with you. You're lying. I have also danced at, Desmond says, I've also danced at theaters and parks at the beach. Do you think because I move my body, it is sexual? Stop sexually harassing me. Again, repeating it doesn't make it so. You're the one obsessed with me and making up lies about me. Repeating it doesn't make it so. I said, I'm not. All this stuff is video of you. Uh, Desmond says, yes, you are. And then I said, many have seen these videos because you're viral. There's all this stuff that I'm talking about with A-Lig doing this and that, or the interview with Desmond or Bella Noche, Lactatia, all these things are on video. Um, I said, I care about you and Lactatia's well-being. And then Desmond says, of what? A lip sync performance dressed as Gwen Stefani? Why is that sexy to you? This kid was wearing like a bra tank top and like, yeah, it's so, everyone knows drag is super sexual. Um, Desmond says, stop sexually harassing me. It's not good for my well-being. I said, it's not, it's gross to me. Not trying to offend kid in a bar is wrong. I've not said anything about you doing anything sexual, not once. Don't confuse you with Michael Alig. Desmond says, it's a, it is a venue, a large theater attached to a building where the bar is. I was nowhere near the bar, not even in the same building or around the people in the bar. Uh, I said, uh, so down here, well, I, I didn't know that. So if that's really true, then thank you for clarifying that is, is actually what I said down here. But I said, I have his interview well before you were born where he talks about what he does. Uh, I said, Desmond says, I wasn't born. What does that have to do with me? So what I was saying there is Desmond has like, I'm talking about how Michael Aleg has been at like the stuff about being sexual with young kids, doing drugs and all this stuff before Desmond was even born. Desmond is trying to say I'm, I'm making it about him when I'm talking about Michael who was doing the stuff before he was even born. Um, I said, thank you for clarifying that you weren't by the bar. I, Desmond says, again, do I do drugs? No. Do I murder people? No. Stop saying I am Michael. Uh, and then I'm saying, I am saying about Aleg, he has been at this before you. I'm not talking about you. He says, you are you obsessed with Michael too? You are creepy. 
Um, I said, special K is something you sniffed off the spot of your hand that is apparently where it gets snorted. I never learned that and uh, learned how to snort a drug in school like you claim you did. Um, Desmond says, you say my mom is obsessed with him, but you are the one obsessed with him and using that to tell lies about me and my mom. I said, he was your inspiration at the time. Desmond says, so? I, did, I didn't know that. I was getting frustrated with people talking about drugs and killing myself, so I sniffed my arm because I was being... This is Desmond replying to the Special K thing. The Special K uh, in, interview was with Bella Noach, and then the other stuff with Michael is with Michael. There were two separate interviews, but both done by Desmond with his mom present. Um, so um, I sniffed my arm because I was being sarcastic and acting out and feeling really upset because he made me talk about Hitler being right and that I should kill myself with fire. So wrong. Hitler was wrong. Killing yourself is wrong. Do not do those things. Do not tell those things to people. Uh, you don't ever want to condemn people. Um, and then Desmond referring to Michael says, yes, I liked fat his fashion at the time. That was all. I said, I want to thank you for your time again, Wendy Desmond, because I know it says your profile is Wendy Rand. Clarify any of this up so I can help tell those who are worried about you uh, that there is no worry. Like I was trying to figure out what the truth is so that people who attack Desmond, I can go after them, you know. Um, please never harm yourself. Those people are bullies and wrong. Your life is special. Um, Desmond says, my profile does not say my mom runs it. This is my personal account. Go to my mom's account. So that I actually didn't know about, but this Desmond is amazing profile used to say De uh, like Wendy runs the account. And then Desmond says, if my life is special, why are you making things up about me and my parents and sexually harassing me when I already get cyberbullied a dozen times a day? That's so sad. Um, I said, hmm, that appears to have changed. Good. I want to clarify with you so I can go at those saying you're abused. So that's, um, I was saying that's good that he's no longer on, his mom is no longer the account um, monitor. Um, I said, can you tell me why in your picture where you're not in drag, you smile really big and genuine, but in drag you're sad? Is that a model gimmick? Uh, Desmond says, the only people abusing me are people like you. I'm not abusing him, I'm concerned. Um, and then Desmond says, it's called modeling. You don't make a big, goofy smile in modeling. Really? You wouldn't be happy if you were a model? Hmm, that's kind of odd. Because you can see in his pictures, he looks sad and depressed in all of his drag stuff. And there's one picture where he, like, has no drag on and he, like, got new glasses and he's smiling. He's dressed like a normal kid and he's just smiling really big. So that's what I was referring to there. And then um, I'm, I said, I'm literally telling you I want to clarify. I want you to clarify for me. Uh, that you aren't being abused is what I was referring to, that you aren't so I can tell others you're not. I'd be on your side pushing back against slander. And uh, Desmond said, you have to look serious, referring to the model thing. I said, so the bag that you had in your mom, um, so that bag that you had that your mom gave you, is that appropriate for a six-year-old? That's one a lot of people have an issue with. Desmond, if you can clarify this stuff, I'll get at those who slander you like I was with this person who was defending you as long as you're in health. Um, Desmond said, that's my mom's shopping bag. She is an adult and allowed to have that. I was helping her carry it and my dad thought it l was funny and took a photo for the family. I'm sure all family have photos of kids doing weird things. Uh, you know, I don't know about a bag that says something like that. Like, why would a kid have anything to do? They barely even know how to read, and you're saying if they don't have books, don't F them? That's pretty messed up. Um, uh, and then I said, uh, but is it funny a kid has a bag that says that? Uh, it doesn't really sound funny to me. Could I, could have turned the bag around so it didn't have the graphic profanity. Uh, Desmond says, I don't have the bag that says that. It was my mom's bag, and I wanted to help her carry it out of kindness. See, De Desmond is a really nice kid. I'll get more get more into that later. Um, I said, um, by has, um, the, by has, I mean you were possessing it, wearing it. Because I was saying... Uh, up, up here I said, but is it funny that a kid has a bag that says that? And by has, I mean you are possessing it, wearing it. 
Uh, well, after my dad took the photo, he carried it for her for a minute or two. So that's nice of him. Shouldn't a dad, Shouldn't you as a man always be carrying your women's things so she doesn't have to? Um, and then so Desmond says, so does that mean I have sex with people who have books because I held my mom's shopping bag for like a minute or two trying to help her? Stop sexually harassing me. All your claims have to do with sex and it's making me uncomfortable. Again, if you're uncomfortable with someone talking about sex, you're going to keep the conversation going and I would never talk with a kid sexually. That's disgusting. That's disgusting. This is concern and I'm not I'm not saying anyway. I'm not yeah. So I said, Desmond, you're a really nice kid. You're very wise. That interview where your mom asked what you were scared of and you said being murdered, when she chuckled, you quivered and could feel the cold. Like, he, you could see his bottom lip, like he bit it, and like he was just sad. He was crushed. Um, I said, you're smart and caring. That's why when your mom laughed at your fear, you could feel something was wrong. What else scares you? What else scares you? What else scares you? What else scares you? Uh, I don't say anything about that bag applying to you, rather that it's not meant for a kid to don. Uh, Desmond says, I didn't quiver. I didn't know what to say because I didn't know they would ask the question, so I thought of something that is bad and could happen as quick as I could. And my mom chuckled because the question all made her also uncomfortable. We weren't given the question ahead of time, so it was weird and awkward. Why are you going back through my life and making stuff up about little things that don't even mean anything and that happened many years ago? So this interview with the murder thing, Desmond saying he's afraid of being murdered, he did with his mom specifically, not the Michael A. Lig interview, not the Bella Noach interview, but I do believe this was after being around Michael A. Lig, um, which you know might explain why Desmond has these fears. Uh, so then I said, hmm, your body language, facial expression looked like you were really crushed and sad. Uh, Desmond said, do you think I'm somehow damaged because I helped my mom with her shopping bag for a minute or two? Uh, that's not what I was claiming. I've only seen a little bit about you, but this stuff isn't normal for a kid to go through because I have only seen a few things from Desmond. Um, uh, Desmond says, I was crushed because why would they ask that? Hmm, Really? Um, and upset because my mom didn't like the question and the producers pressured me to answer it anyways. Uh, it, it all looked like one shot when they asked that, so I don't know where the pressure was coming from. Um, I think that was just a spontaneous moment of him, him expressing his, uh, his feelings. Um... Uh, so then I said, um, no, I don't think it's a bad message to have a bag like that. Or I said, no, I don't. I think it's a bad message to have a bag like that next to a kid. If anything, you keep your child from that language as long as possible. That's what I think. Um, and then Desmond says, my life is normal. I go to school like a normal kid. I have friends like a normal kid. I have interests and hobbies like a normal kid. My public life is very different from my private life. So stop harassing me. He doesn't even say please. Anyway, um, wait real quick, Desmond. After she asked you, you gave her the answer of climate change, global warming, right? Um, Desmond said, I live in New York City. I have heard and seen every bad word and thing since I was a baby. Um... I said, I bet. I really wanted to believe you have a life completely separate from your job. Uh, so like I was referring to, I'm happy that Desmond actually has a normal life where he gets to be a kid. If, if that's really that's really what I want, I would want him to be a kid outside of like his job of doing drag and stuff. Um, so then I said, you were afraid of global warming, right? Um, and then Desmond says, I have no idea. It was one interview. What is it I said about climate change years ago? Uh, Desmond said, I do have a separate life. Stop making things up about my private life. You don't even know me, weirdo. Uh, I said, you gave the answer to what you fear as global warming. That's a fear, right? Desmond said, yes, I'm still afraid of climate change. So this is kind of where we get a little bit away from the, the, the inappropriate things with kids. Uh, but then it gets back to it real quick, as you'll see here. Um, so I said, can you advocate for NASA? to use the rain making machines which you can even search NASA makes rain and ask them to put these fires out these all these fires 
there is something called geoengineering where we can control weather like in dubai they make it rain weekly ask for them to make rain over these fires in dry areas desmond says that is a conspiracy sad a teenager can tell a conspiracy truth uh can tell a conspiracy from the truth i said search it right now on youtube nasa makes rain first video from hho factory desmond responded with this link here um which is it, the, like if, if you go into it oh i can't click it so like it doesn't actually this article doesn't deny that this giant cloud here is a is a rain cloud like this is really he doesn't deny anything like it's such a weird and he works for nasa but like the dude literally says no wonder it it makes rain because well it uh let me exit this He's like, no wonder it makes rain, because look, I think it's down here. Yo, what is going on? My phone is geeking out. Oh, it's scrolling through that. So this is this is the article he sent, and literally right here. He's like, yeah, this is this is how this rocket engine works. Okay, so that wasn't it. It's right. Right here, literally, literally says. Did you know the RS-25 burns clean? Its exhaust is water vapor, not smoke. The exhaust is so dense that it can actually fall like rain like this dude sends me an article trying to debunk that nasa makes rain with something where it says that nasa can actually make it fall like rain so anyway <clears throat> i said the video literally has a guy standing next to the machine and then it downpours later um desmond says i can believe it coming from you since you seem to believe a lot of fake theories it's called weather. I said, Operation Popeye, the military flooded the Vietnamese to stop their supply. Weather is a rather is rather simple in some concepts. Um, Desmond says, if you want to discuss sex with kids, why don't you go bother some Republicans? Um, so I posted the video to the actual Top Gear, uh, NASA making their own rain. Um, and, um, and so like that's literally video documentation. Desmond responds with uh, GOP gang of pedos. I didn't. I haven't actually looked at this, um, but then um, I said, uh, or, um, so then I said, I don't want to discuss that at all. I want to discuss kids' safety. I don't. I don't want to talk about. Like I know politicians do nasty things. We all do. They're in the hand of the devil. Um, so then I said, and why don't you take all of your conspiracy theories? to your QAnon friends. Uh, I have better things to do than sit here being harassed. Um, which is, I'm not at all Q, I don't support Q. Q is not truthful at all. Um, so then I said, I'm aware that politicians are corrupt in the gov. Anthony Weiner, for example, Joe Biden has video of him being way too close with kids. There's something called Skull and Bones, Brotherhood of Death, that both George Bush and John Kerry belong to. We vote for these same groomed candidates who are related, by the way. Um, and then I told him the one time I voted was for Obama, by the way, because the one time I voted, I did vote for Obama. So I'm not, you know, Republican stuff doesn't work, despite conspiracy theories kind of supposedly being... Um, Republican or whatever, even though we're not in the political system at all. Both wings of the political system are of the fallen angel. Um, and so um, I said, I'm not red or blue. And then I shared, because Desmond is, is Democratic. So I shared this video with him about uh, creepy Bo Jiden, uh with children. It's disgusting. Uh, Desmond says, go take your politics elsewhere. Um, and Desmond brought up the politics thing. I said it goes both ways, referring back to how he sent me the GOP thing and I sent him the president of the country, the Democrat thing. Um, I was talking about weather and I said weather control isn't politics. Um, and then Desmond says, I have nothing to do with them. I can't even vote. Um, and then I said, that's what I'm concerned about, pointing up to Bo Jiden with, you know, kids. Um, and then I said red or, uh, red or blue, uh, and that we can control the weather. Um, I said, you like San Francisco, you know, our military used a bioweapon on them without consent operation sea spray. 
This is why we need unconditional love, not love is love, which is true because if you unconditionally love someone, you're not going to spray them with a weapon. Uh, saying love is love, if you love spraying people with a weapon, then you can do it because you love it. Um, I've told you several times to stop harassing me, uh, and that is why you make me uncomfortable. Why are you still harassing me? That's abusive behavior. Um, I'm not harassing him. I'm having a conversation, and he keeps responding. I said, do you really want me to stop talking? Because I'm really honored to talk with you. Uh, thank you. I hope you will take these facts, like weather, fake politics, corrupt officials, and spread the word. You can reach a lot of people. Is there anything you want to clarify for me so I can defend against those who claim you're in danger? Um, and then I said, thanks, Desmond, for the talk. I hear you normally just block, or Wendy does. Um, they block anything slightly negative. Uh, so thank you for this opportunity. Unless you respond, I won't say anything back. God bless. So that is the conversation that I had with Desmond. Takeaway from this. Um, he says he's not in danger. We have to, that's him saying it or his mom, whoever, we don't know. Um, but he does say that he's not in danger, lives a separate life. But all of this stuff, I mean, if Desmond is told that it's, it's not being considered in danger to be abused, maybe he doesn't think that he's in danger even though he's being abused. Like the, the evil people call good bad and bad good. So, uh, let me know what you think about this. Uh, please keep the conversation civil. Um, again, I'm in no way stating Desmond did anything sexually, um, did anything um, with anybody, just the people that he's around uh, that have admitted to doing these things. So I want to clarify all that, and I'm not making any accusations or claims, um, but I don't think it's normal for a parent to put you around such shady suspect figures um my parents never did um so you know wendy getting him hooked up with michael a leg is kind of i mean he literally said michael a leg and james st james were his two inspirations don't know much about james st james